Hello friend, Silkworm Rearing. The topic we are going to learn in this video. Uh, this Silkworm Rearing includes rearing appliances and various rearing techniques. Uh, India is one of the few countries having tropical and temperate sericulture where sericulture practice differ according to the ecological condition. If we see in Kashmir, in Kashmir uh, uh, mostly monocrop pattern practice and uh, in uh, West Bengal, Karnataka, four to uh, six uh, crops per year harvested. Okay. Uh, see the silkworm rearing houses. Uh, these are the a sketch of model of rearing houses. Then these are the four floor plan of rearing houses. We can use these different uh, type of houses for silkworm rearing. Uh, we see this this model of rearing house this model having a window for ventilation see this roof uh, having a ventilation then uh, here the veranda uh, these are the uh, rearing rooms or rearing practices we can use these uh, different rearing houses for silicon rearing uh, before start these rearing practices uh, certain points should be considered these points are procurement of quality seed. We always uh, select a good quality of eggs, good quality of seed, and this seed we select from grannies. After selection of good quality of seed, we incubate these eggs, these seeds in temperature near about 23 to 28 degrees Celsius with relative humidity, 80%. Uh, then a uh, uh, decision of rearing, Rearing time and season is also important. The rearing time should be decided by taking following points. Growth of mulberry plant, then leaf quality and labor required for silicone rearing. Then uh, next point is uh, selection of silicone variety. We always select the variety of silicone uh, depending on the environmental condition available. Then, uh, Brushing of larvae, we never handle the larvae by hands because uh, while handling uh, while uh, handling the larvae by hands, there is a chance to spread of disease. Uh, so avoid this spread of disease. We use feather to brush the larvae. Uh, then feeding is also important point. We feed the young larvae on tender leaves and old larvae on mature leaves. We clean the bed by husk or net, or we can combinedly use this husk and net for bed cleaning. So these are the certain points we consider before uh, rearing techniques. Uh, these are the certain rearing appliances we use for rearing of silicone larvae. Uh, first rearing appliances, yeah, we call equipment is rearing strands. See this image of rearing uh, of rearing strands. This rearing strand made up of wood or bamboo having your tensors for rearing trays. The next appliance, next, next equipment is rearing trays. Uh, it may be rectangular or circular trays made up from bamboo or wood. Uh, see this uh, plastic tray used for rearing of silicone larvae, having a legs. Uh, next equipment is ant, pay, ant whales. This leg of uh, these uh, strands, rearing strands, we place in ant whale to avoid the curling of ant on trees and attacking on silicone. Then uh, we need paraffin paper. This uh, paraffin paper in this thick crop paper coated with wax. It is used for uh, early, uh, rearing early stage larvae like first instar, second instar. Uh, this paraffin paper is used to prevent the withering of leaves, means it maintains the moisture of leaves because we coated the, this paraffin paper with wax and it maintained the proper humidity in the rearing bed. Then uh, to uh, store the mulberry leaves, after harvesting of mulberry leaves, we store these leaves to maintain the freshness of leaves. We use leaf chamber. In this leaf chamber, we stored mulberry leaves. It is made up of wood or bamboo strips. This leaf chamber covered on all sides with wet gunny cloth to prevent withering of leaves. And in this way, we maintain the humidity in, in leaf chamber. Uh, 
uh, we also want chopsticks because this chopstick used to handle the young larvae to avoid unhygienic condition. Otherwise, uh, if we handle the larvae by hands, then uh, it may spread the disease. Uh, these chopsticks, a pair of chopsticks made up uh, from bamboo or plastic. See these chopsticks. Then we want feather to brush the larvae. See this feather. Then chopping boards uh, to feed the first instar, second instar larvae. Chopped leaves are must. Uh, we chop the leaves by using chopping a knife to, uh, to give a proper shape of leaves. We use this chopping knife. Then we require a cleaning net. It is made up of cotton thread or nylon. Then uh, we require mountains. These mountains are called, uh, are, uh, we also call Chandrika. This is the most important equipment in sericulture because this is used as a support for uh, last instar silkworm larvae to spin the cocoon. See this image of Chandrika. It is made up of bamboo strips and made. So these are the certain appliances, certain equipment we use for rearing of uh, silkworm larvae. Then uh, rearing techniques, uh, we can use different techniques or different stage of larvae. If we want to rear the young larvae, we use chalky rearing. The chalky rearing includes box rearing, stance rearing, the other uh, cover rearing methods. Okay. So in this box rearing, uh, this box, yeah, we use wooden trays in crisscross conditions to maintain the uh, ventilation. Okay. Then stand rearing. When optimum temperature and more humidity required, we use these stand rearing methods for uh, rearing of young larvae. Uh, we also cover this uh, tray by polythene and uh, this polythene sheet wrap we use for rearing of young larvae. Uh, in this, uh, when we use this chalky rearing for young larvae, the feeding is must. Uh, we use chopped leaves, tender chopped leaves in three to four times in a day for these young larvae. Then if we want to rear the late age larvae, like a fourth instar, fifth instar, then we use these self-rearing methods, floor rearing and shoot rearing methods. Uh, now next point is bed cleaning. This bed cleaning is uh, important to maintain the hygienic condition in the rearing room, in trays, in larval uh, stalks. This bed cleaning is done by a uh, husk or a net. Yeah, we can use combinedly husk and net for bed, bed cleaning. Then spacing up larvae worms, silk worms. As the larvae grows, it requires more space and that's why transfer of larvae from one trace to another trace is important. In this way, we maintain the space in worm. So the spacing of worm is most important. And the next uh, practice in rearing of silkworm is include mounting. This mounting means transferring of fifth instar larvae to mountains. We know mountains. Uh, see this image of mountains, yeah, we call Chandrika. So this mounting is nothing but the transferring of fifth instar larvae to mountains for spinning the cocoon. This mounting includes bamboo mountains. We can use bamboo mountains for mounting. Uh, we can use plastic corrugate mountains for mounting and uh, see these rotary mountains we use for mounting. So this is about silkworm rearing. This silkworm rearing uh, is a second stage, second step in uh, sericulture. Yeah, we call entomological division of sericulture. Uh, 